good afternoon good morning good evening depending on where you're watching us from this is dr Bada khalifa uh on the scholars table so today we've decided to move a bit from public health into an arena of engineering i mean i went to um, atlanta a couple of weeks ago and then i was uh, fortunate to meet some of the talented students from ghana who are currently at Georgia Institute of Technology. And if you don't know Georgia Institute of Technology, uh, they are one of the best uh, engineering programs you can get in the US. So I was quite excited that I was able to meet uh, these students. I thought I could share their journey uh, from, from Ghana, from senior high level to uh, the university level and how they got multiple offers, multiple scholarships to study PhD directly from their bachelors at Georgia Institute of Technology. So today I have Michael Boateng, uh, who was a student at Ashesi University, um, who is currently a PhD student here in the US. So uh, we'll have the opportunity to learn his story and then uh, take some advice, all those who are planning to also take a similar part, you may find this interview very productive. So let me invite our guest and then we'll get the program started. All right. Uh, so, Michael, good yeah. to see you again and welcome to the Scholar's Table. Thank you. Glad to be here. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I mean, I remember when I saw you guys two weeks ago, um, I, was, I was really excited. I didn't have much time, but you know, I decided to, to stick around and, and wait for you guys and, and your journeys were quite inspiring. I know most students, most senior high school students, once they are in the science class, all they are thinking about is, is doing medicine or doing something mm. health related. Uh, so I, I thought it would be a very interesting conversation to have you guys come on, also share your journey, give us a bit of something that is quite different from, from the health sciences and also to serve as a motivation for students who who are in other fields of, of the sciences. So thank you for joining us today. So can you tell us a bit about uh, your early life educational background in Ghana and how those experiences and decisions, you know, have shaped your interest in engineering in particular? Okay, thank you so much. Um, Dr. Banda for having me. Like I said, very happy to be here. Um, so yes, if I'm going to take it back a bit, I would say um, during um, my high school years, um, I would say that's like um, my form, form 4, form 5, form 6, like around that range. Uh, my dad really took an interest in my education in the sense that he really wanted his children to like have a very solid background in mathematics and physics too as well. So um, He's also an engineer, by the way, but uh, <laughs> <Okay>. is, um... <laughs> so yeah, dad really enjoyed like mathematics and physics. So my sister, my brother and myself, he would literally wake us up at 2 a.m. and tutor us, mm -hmm. you know, make sure you get the math concept. Sometimes mom would wake up and then she'd be like, hey, guys, I think maybe you should go to bed. And he was like, okay, that's what you say, but when you're successful, <laughs> you really see. So it was, it was those kinds of like, fun moments from my early childhood I remember that really helped me grasp mathematics and physics concepts and enjoy math and physics so then you know he tutored me at home like I said then I was able to go to a new nation which was like one of the top ranked schools in Ghana if you want to study like A level okay so I went there and then I said yeah so I went there and then I studied A levels um, I did math physics chemistry and I was so happy to be able to pass through with all A's so through that, I think my confidence only continued to increase. Um, during my time there too, I was the head prefect and ultimately the valedictorian for my class. I think all those um, moments really shaped who I am today, gave me that sense of focus, direction, diligence, and confidence, I would say. So that's a little bit about my early um, experiences, you know, coming to love engineering for what it is. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, you, you, you didn't, or your dad or your parents didn't quite... Uh, let you go to the traditional senior high school path mm, yeah why yeah, what, was, so did... what was your main reason i mean like i, I know you would yeah. probably see your mates going to Presec and uh, chimota and prempe and all those things why why didn't you 
take a similar path? Why the A-level path? Yeah, I, I got those questions a lot, especially when I went to university, because I was surrounded by most people who went to like, you know, senior high schools and like um, government institutions. They'd ask me that a lot. I think <laughs> my response is somewhat synonymous to something my father would say, which is like, he saw that the British curriculum was very robust in mm -hmm. terms of the things and the learnings and the gains from it. Like he okay. was really um, bent on making us understand that even though that path was slightly more um, difficult and even some might be expensive to us, well, he found it in his, heart, in his heart that he should like really take us through because when we come out, we are better people for it. And I started to see that during my undergrad. Sometimes we do some projects and some friends would be like, oh no, this is not how we were taught in our school, but it looks like you're doing it very well. So all that, I feel like it reaffirms everything he did and everything we believed in him to do. Yeah. So you didn't miss those, oh, national science and math quiz <laughs> and all those things? Uh, yeah, yeah, you see, people talk about it and, you know, I'm a bit lost. I'm like, huh? I remember my first year in undergrad and I was like, huh? NSMQ, like, what's that? And then they'll make fun of me like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, come on, you don't know NSMQ. And there's so much energy surrounding it, people cheering on their high schools and stuff. But no, I would say um, taking on the British curriculum, it's more... It's more introspective. I feel like you get to learn a lot of things. But still, definitely, I think the SHS is um, from the government institutions to teach a lot. Um, I was just happy to find myself surrounded by like very intelligent people uh, when I went to college from all over the world. So I'm just happy. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, uh, so during your uh, A-level education, right, how, how different is it from the typical senior high school uh, programs. I know, like, senior high school is, is is three years. How long did you spend uh, in, in, at the A level? <laughs> okay, so A level is actually two years. A level is, I would say, what you need to be able to enter into a university. So okay. It's like our version of WASI. Okay. It's like okay. Our version of WASI. Yeah. And and some might say that the the B the B C our version of it is the I G C S E. Okay. Although you will notice that some people can actually enter into university with the IGCSE alone. So I, I think, you know, it creates a certain standard for the British curriculum, I feel. But um, yeah, so A-level takes two years. And during that two years, you get to pick a maximum. Or typically, the average people will pick is three subjects. Okay. You pick three subjects. So I pick math, physics, and then chemistry. Now, for each of these subjects, too, you have to take five papers in each of them so mm -hmm. chemistry i had to write five different papers physics i had to write five different papers it's only math i had to write four different papers so each of the papers are more different from the last so you get to learn a lot i remember math is pure math one pure math two and three statistics and then mechanics okay and, you know by the time you, yeah by the time you go to university like your background in math should be fairly strong like yeah yeah this is this is this is certainly quite different uh very different from uh from the was yeah. uh experience um okay so i mean so during your time in 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 the school uh were you involved in any science clubs any competitions at that level uh before you even went to uh the university um i would say most of them were clubs but they were like after school clubs um, there weren't like official ones like I see in the SHS, like the um, government institutions where, you know, they have specific clubs because they are really big schools. They have specific clubs. You know, they invite people over to come and give presentations and stuff. No, it's not really like that for us. It's more like you are taking your different courses. Um, there are leadership positions and leadership roles in the university, same as with the SHS. But for clubs, it's mostly after school after school you know we get together do some there were some science club chess club soccer club stuff like that but not really uh, much like we have in the shs okay so, other institutions yeah all right okay